You can choose to go off forms the DDS sends you to fill out if you want to, but you'll be making a huge mistake. I'm about to explain why that will be a huge mistake for your SSDI claim. Later in the video, I'll go over the types of forms the DDS sends you to complete when you're waiting for that SSDI decision. SSA forms are very necessary for you to complete in your SSDI claim. The forms that the DDS sends you while you're waiting on your decision are very necessary because they serve several purposes. Let's go over those right now. First thing is the forms show that you are willing to cooperate in your claim. There are times when they send forms and they're looking for you to provide information, of course. But one of the things that the forms indicate is you are actually participating in your claim. It lets the DDS examiner know that you are involved and you want to help your claim and you also want to help the examiner work on your claim. What you don't want to be is missing in action when the examiner sends you a form. If you don't respond to the form, that sends a message to the examiner that this person is really not that invested or maybe they're not taking it that seriously so they won't take your case very seriously. So forms are the first and best way for the DDS to see you're gonna do your best to make life easier and make a case go faster to get processed. So the second purpose that the forms serve is on the forums, you can actually talk about your symptoms. So whatever it is that you're experiencing with your conditions, you can communicate those on the forums. Sure, the medical records will have that information, but with the forms, you get to share what you are experiencing from your perspective. So you could be having shortness of breath, weakness, you can have forgetfulness, you can have numbness, you can have extreme pain. Those are symptoms that a person may have as a result of the condition that they are experiencing. Sometimes your symptoms have nothing to do with your condition. It could actually be a result of the treatment that you're getting. So side effects from medications are a symptom that can impact your ability to work. The third purpose of forms is that it shows how credible you are. It actually allows the DDS examiner to know, hey, this guy or this woman is believable. When you share your answers on forms, you're basically letting the DDS know, hey, this is what I'm experiencing and I'm being completely truthful and honest and accurate about what I'm experiencing. So when you share your answers on these forms, what the DDS is gonna do is look at your form and what you said about your symptoms and, and your experience. And then they look at the records, the medical records in your claim, and they're gonna match up to see, okay, just how, how close is this match? Uh, when it comes to this person's symptoms and what the medical records are showing. So if the medical records show that this person is really not dealing with anything but mild stuff, but this person is saying that everything is so is completely severe, off the charts, bad, then that person doesn't look as credible as a person who says, hey, I'm going through severe pain, and the medical records say, yeah, he's going through severe pain. So the term, when the things don't match up, all the way is partially credible. So you may be going through some things, but the medical records don't agree because this is the, this is the doctor saying what is happening. They have signs, they have medical findings from tests and labs, and they're giving their assessment medically on what you're going through. And when your forms don't show that, then there's gonna be a disconnect and they'll say that this person is partially credible. They're not saying that you're not credible at all, only partially credible. And the goal is to be fully credible. So the DDS is not saying that you're lying if your symptoms don't line up with the medical records. It is saying they don't line up well enough. The fourth purpose behind these forms is they give more context. So you can give a full picture of what you're going through when you fill out these forms. So the records might say certain things, but you get to tell in your own words and give a lot more background on what you're actually going, actually going through. So it's, it's really important for you to say in your own words what you're actually having to deal with on a daily basis. 
That includes your daily activities, how you take care of yourself, how you go about dealing with your social connections and things like managing money, your ability to walk, whatever the case may be. You get to give a picture of what it is that you are going through. Now, most people get really confused and overwhelmed because they get this form with all these pages that they have to fill out and they're only given 10 to 14 days to fill them out and send them back. So that creates a lot of stress and anxiety. And I'm sure that it is going to be just a challenge to have to rack your brain and put down everything in a way where the DDS can see what's happening. That's why I have provided for you what's called the SSA Forms Masterclass Suite. So I provided video masterclasses of the most widely used forms sent by the DDS. And also I cover some SSA forms as well. All you have to do is go to gregbrinkley.org backslash masterclasses and I will show you exactly what will help you complete the forms in an easy and clear way. I go through each form section by section, question by question. I break it all down and take all the guesswork out. So go to brinkley.org backslash masterclasses. I'm trying to tell you having these forms is gonna be a time saver and a game changer for your SSDI claim. Let's get into some of the forms that DDS sends you. The first form I wanna talk about is the work history form. The work history form is a more detailed look of your work history. The DDS is going to want your last 15 years of work. So the last 15 years of jobs, that's what they want to have recorded on that work history form. It's like a more detailed, in-depth version of what you might have done when you applied for SSDI. So this is a really great form to complete. And it's also a very important form to complete. The next form I want to talk about is called the exertional ADL or activities of daily living. So the exertional ADL is a form that talks about what you deal with on a daily basis, which are physical conditions. It's really designed for only physical issues, conditions, illnesses, and injuries. So it gets into your daily activities, your personal care, uh, um, your, your function in, in terms of doing chores around the house, and so on. It's a really helpful, it's really helpful form. But there's an even more detailed form than the exertional ADL, and that's called the function report. And the function report kind of works the same way as the exertional ADL. The only difference is the function report is actually one that is designed to help with people who have physical and mental conditions. So it has some other questions in there, such as how you deal with your social uh, activities. Uh, How is your... Um, your, your, your attention and concentration, how you deal with supervisors, how you handle stress, and so on. This is the longest form that the DDS will send you. So it takes a long time to kind of weave through and get this completed, but it provides so much detailed information for your claim. Then there are specialty forms. These are ones that kind of drive into a specific lane based on your conditions. So if you have complaints or symptoms of pain, there's a pain questionnaire. If you have epilepsy and you suffer suffer seizures, there's a seizure questionnaire. If you have heart issues, there's a cardiac questionnaire and so on. There's quite a a number of them. So so just know that those are out there. Then lastly, there are what are called third-party forms. The function report actually has a third-party version of the same form that you could send to a friend or family member or or neighbor who knows about your conditions and know what you deal with on a daily basis. But there are other ones like an employer questionnaire. There's even a parole agent questionnaire. So so that's how how specific these third-party forms can get. So ultimately, the forms are really a critical part of your SSDI claim. If you don't fill out the forms or get them back on time, they may deny your claim because of what is called insufficient evidence. In other words, they don't have the information from you to complete the claim. And they need the information from you to get what they need to make a proper assessment of your conditions. So if you don't send the forms back 
or if you just kick them to the curb and think that they're not that important, or if you try to strong arm the <laughs> the examiner by by uh you know just stonewalling, that's not going to get you anywhere in your claim, and they're going to make a decision based on insufficient evidence. Now it's one thing for you to get forms to complete for your claim for SSDI that the DDS sends you, but what about your doctors? Your doctors get sent forms by the DDS to complete to help your claim as well. So what happens then? Well, it's really important for you to know if your doctor is being cooperative with the DDS because that can stall everything on your claim. If your doctor doesn't send back a form that the DDS needs to have to complete your claim. So I have a video that deals with that very thing. All you gotta do is click on the box up here. It'll take you right to the video and I'll see you on the other side in the next video.